The loss snaps an eight game win streak, which was tied for the longest active streak in all of college football. So the Aggies cover the two and a half point favorite spread that they had coming in. Just 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 a touch. Say that. Just a touch. And uh, the game also hits the over. It was 47 and a half. They scored 51 in the game. Aggies getting 41 of those as they improve to five and one on the season. Welcome inside our HQ studios. Jeremy St. Louis alongside Damian Harris for your college football post game of this one. First of all, let's start with the Missouri side of this because this is not something that we certainly expected when we were talking about this on the pregame show. How bad is this loss for Missouri? Very bad and very much so worse than the scoreboard indicated. This was a complete dominant blowout from Texas A&M. Miami did not, or excuse Miami, Missouri did not show up offensively, defensively, special teams. They, they were just out there collecting a sweat, as my guy Bill Belichick used to say. I mean, nothing about this game went their way. And on the flip side, everything went the way for Texas A&M. And I remember I asked Josh Pate before the game, which Missouri defense are we going to see today? Are we going to see the defense that gave up two goose eggs in the first two weeks of the season? Or are we going to see the defense that gave up 21 points against Boston College, 27 and an overtime win against Vandy? And I think the answer was obvious. We saw that second part of the season defense from Missouri, and clearly it is nowhere near good enough to compete at the level that we expected. 19 teams were undefeated coming into the weekend, and that is now down at least one now because of the fact that Missouri joins a list of teams that do suffer one defeat. What message did Texas A&M send to the rest of the SEC today? Well, aside from Texas A&M, Connor Wegman sent a message today. To this Danny Cannell. My, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, to myself, too, because I was almost ready to go back on my pick whenever I heard that he was going to be the starter. Yeah. But he came out and told me, he told Danny, he told all the people that thought that this was somebody else's team. This is my team. I am here. I am ready for this moment. This is the biggest moment that he's been in so far. It's the biggest game for Texas A&M so far this season. And look at the way that they performed. And I said this was a complete dominant effort for Texas A&M. Without Connor Wegman, I don't think this team plays collectively as well as they do. So for him to be able to come out, silence the naysayers, silence the doubters, show that he can play. And not only was he playing, he was being physical. He was running the ball. He wasn't sliding. He was taking hits. He was playing tough, gritty football. Now, as a coach, you sit here and look at him and like, well, I wish he would slide. He's coming off a shoulder injury. Right. But what does that do for the rest of his team when you see a guy that's been on the sideline for weeks and weeks chomping at the bit to get back under the reins of this team? He goes out there. He plays with fire. He plays with passion. He was 18 for 22. He was efficient. And like I said, he was the spark that really led to this route by Texas A&M, in my opinion. Didn't throw a touchdown on the day, but also did Didn't not need turn to. the ball over. That's right? more important. Didn't need to. That's more important. When you got a running back that can score three touchdowns on the ground when your defense plays as well as they did today you don't have to go out and put up superstar numbers you don't have to go out and throw for four touchdowns Connor Wegman did exactly what he was supposed to do, supposed to do today he was efficient in the past game he did not turn the ball over like you said and he played a complete game as a quarterback and like I said the rest of his team rallied around him and did the exact same A&M put up over 500 yards of offense in this game so for Missouri CFP is that it it should be it should be because to me this is yes they just lost and yes they just got blown out but this is a this is a trend that we're seeing the Boston College win we were looking um okay Missouri should have won by more then we watched them going to overtime against Vandy we're like okay are we starting to did we overrate this Missouri team right out the gate this Missouri defense like I said they put up two goose eggs in the first two weeks two shutouts are, are did we overrate them and then what happened today now we can all look at our, look at ourselves I can look at you and tell you this Missouri team is not for real I'm not saying they're not good I'm not saying that they don't have good players I'm not saying that they don't have good coaches but they are not ready for a playoff run just yet well and you look at that schedule too for Missouri it's uh, it's not getting any I was gonna say it's an uphill climb for them the rest of the way and as we've seen on the trajectory that they're on the rest of their schedule along with the trajectory they're on as a team it doesn't look very good I mean you have this is one of those games you have to flush but you just don't know how much you're going to be able to because you certainly don't want this steamrolling into something else is Missouri the number nine ranked team in the country certainly going to be going down in the college football playoff rankings do you think I mean this is almost a case where based on the play you almost switch it but a and obviously not going to be right. that much but A&M definitely made some ground they made up some ground today do you think they're in the top 15 
Do you think they're a top 15 team? I in the think country? I think if they play this way week in and week out, yes, they are a top 15 team. But that's that's the beauty of it. You have to play that way every single game. In Connor in games that Connor Wegman has played, Texas A&M hasn't always looked this way. Right. Texas A&M has not looked this way until today, to be quite honest with you. Now you carry that with you the rest of the way. You look at yourself as okay. Now we've got a real foundation to build on. Our quarterback showed he's the guy. Our team, the way we played collectively, we can we can make a run at this. We can we have a serious opportunity in front of us. everything that we want is in front of us. It's ahead of us. So to me, if they do that and they attack the rest of the season with this that type of mindset, they're absolutely a top 15 team. Where do you put Missouri? After this today, because um, they're obviously not a top 15 team. No, it would be hard for me to say that they're even a top 20 team right now. Wow. Again, based on the trajectory, because when it comes to rankings, when it comes to college football projections, when it comes to the Heisman, when it comes to a lot of different things, it's all about recency bias. What have you done for me now? Uh -huh. What are you doing for me? Danny Cannell loves to say it all the time, right? What are you doing for me right now? And what has Mizzou done over the past month? They let one, they they squeaked away with one, then they really squeaked away with one against Vandy, and now they just absolutely routed. So to me, they're, they're a 20 to 25 ranked team right now. Well, we'll see. The new AP poll will come out on Sunday. Missouri, 41-10 losers to Texas A&M as the Aggies send a message to the rest of the SEC and college football that they are around to stay as you take a look at versus AP ranked teams the Aggies this is the largest win versus an AP top 10 opponent uh, in school history 34 points their first win versus a ranked opponent since 2022 as you see here they've lost their previous six games big winners though on Saturday